Alright guys, it has turned into an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the top beautiful. It is a Sunday afternoon here in Paradise. We are, it is Sunday, June 25th, 2023, somewhere around there. And uh, we are heading home from the Ithaca Home Depot and to pick up some of these beautiful sunflowers to celebrate summer. Oh man, heading back to the Bugs and Jar Farm where we actually had a busy weekend this weekend. So I'm sitting here, uh, <laughs> you know, playing Sunday afternoon quarterback still just just trying to figure out what the fuck is going on uh with these uh well i don't know not exactly doomer chicks but just the old the old whine about i'm, I'm really starting to lose my patience with uh not finding some woman uh you might actually look at what Hambone Little Tail has to offer and throw caution to the wind and uh, give it a try. So, so last night was interesting because I had three uh, options not to choose from, but human nature uh, to observe. So. And one cabin in Blue Dragon was this very attractive, obviously intelligent, educated, uh, good sense of humor woman just traveling by herself. She drove up to Ithaca, New York from Washington, D.C. to go to some uh, bluegrass concert, which I would have loved to have gone to. Uh, and then she gets all the way to Bugs in a Jar Farm and she's so tired of driving and she is so happy with right where she was she just blew off the uh, b blew off the damn uh, bluegrass festival so you know I'm hanging out with her as long as she would let me as so I you know, stretching out my time with her. She was probably late 30s is what I'm figuring. So I went and got her fire going and everything and finally couldn't think of any more excuse to be hanging around with this uh, beautiful 30-something uh, woman at my Airbnb and two chicken shit to offer to drive to the bluegrass concert uh, <clears throat> because that is the quickest way to not only not be a super host but to not be a super host at all so uh, I'm, I'm down there you know down there sitting there all by myself uh, on the damn computer uh, while a one minute walk away is this attractive uh, woman sitting there probably on her computer. So that was my big Saturday night. So in the other tiny house, in another tiny house, we had this young 20-something couple. Uh, you know, the dating, they were 26 years old. They were here for the Ithaca Reggae Fest is what they were here for. And so I got to observe the, the you know, the little lovebirds uh, with their whole life stretched out before them. And, oh, God, and they were frog hunting in the pond and whatnot. And then up in the top of the hill, I had this middle-aged, yeah, I'd say late 40s married couple. You know, I don't know how long they've been married, but they were clearly, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, and I'm just looking at these two people. 
you know, both of them, neither one of them like obese, but both of them uh, overweight. Although I guess the new normal of overweight, they were probably, you know, median, median weight. Just <clears throat> watching them uh, putting up their little, their little pop up, their little easy up, and, and all of this shit, and unpacking their stuff and starting their fire. Oh God, you know. So that was, so they're in one tiny house, the married couple. The other couple is off at the reggae fest and this single woman is up there by herself in Blue Dragon while I'm sitting there on Saturday night with my thumb up my ass, wondering, is this the rest of your life? Which I guess it is, you know, because I'm kind of trapped there on the weekends, you know, being a super host and all. So I was really, so when was it? A couple of days ago, I guess on the same day on medium.com, uh, there's two articles. I don't know why, you know, I get all the doom and gloom articles, but I think it has to do with the two things that I wrote for Medium, you know, one about starting a dating site, Dead Planet Singles, starting a uh, dating site for Doomers, and then the other essay I wrote in Praise of Naked Women, uh, <laughs> which kind of speaks to, if, but for whatever reason, uh, I get these, I, I, I get these articles, the vast majority written by women, vast majority written by women about the dating life and the single life and uh, looking for love in all the wrong places and stuff. So two stories come out, I can't remember the name of this one young woman, this little hottie and uh, I've, I've read her dating uh, stuff before and her article was yesterday, she was talking about some, I don't know, study or survey or something that she had just read that one out of three young men are no longer having sex. And it was called, I think the name of her essay was Four Unsurprising Reasons That One Third of Young Men Are No Longer Having Sex. I can't remember, was it 18 to 25 year olds or was it 18 to 35 years old? It is either men age 18 to 25 or 18 to 35, according to this research or survey, are, are not, they're just not having sex. They're celibate. And it was a little unclear whether this was a voluntary or involuntary choice. Although, uh, of course, one of her unsurprising reasons was, you know, going off on her rant about incels. Uh, you know, one of the unsurprising reasons, I guess, is that one out of three young men are, are incels. And uh, so she had her rant about that. Now, she nowhere mentioned anywhere in this story, which I was trying to find, if one third of young women are not having sex either. She made no mention anywhere. Uh, looking at her picture, I'm guessing she's probably late 20s and an absolute hottie. I uh, wish I could remember her name. Uh, but she just completely ignored uh, that statistic. Whether so, but it was implied that 100% of young women 
age 18 to 25 or 18 to 35 are having sex, yet only 66% of young men are still having sex. And I'm thinking, huh, well, what does that mean for the two-thirds of young men who are still having sex? Uh, does that mean that one-third of the young men are getting twice the amount of pussy because these uh, all of these uh, leftover young women looking for a hard dick uh, is, is that what it was saying or are the two-thirds of the young men still having sex are they having 150 percent as much sex so you know none of this was you know th these were you know, this is stuff that inquiring minds want to know, and I'm thinking, well, Hambone, if uh, back in the day when you were age 18 to whether it was 25 or 35, <clears throat> I'm, I'm assuming that I would have been uh, in the two-thirds of men still having, young men still having sex, and hopefully I would be getting twice the amount of pussy because of all those little limp dicks, incels, whatever, not uh, getting any pussy at all. You know, so I remember, you know, of course, you know, on my 21st birthday, I had, th I had sex with three women for my 21st birthday. So hopefully, I, I don't know, uh, but I think, and I know it, least one of those three, and I'm pretty sure two of those three uh, <clears throat> probably were having sex with three men on their 21st birthday. So anyway, uh, so I, she, you know, she put those four unsurprising reasons, never mentioning anywhere in the article, never mentioning pornography, never mentioning sex dolls, and most glaringly, never mentioning the average BMI of young women nowadays. Uh, I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm looking at all of these goddamn young women. The, these just, the, you know, the waddling around these, the, these blobs of adipose tissue. You know, these young women, I'm seeing it more and more and more and more. You go on Netflix and you look at this thing, it's called Mer People, you know, mainly mermaids. And just looking at the picture, they have that they have this, uh, the, these three young women on the, you know, the shot from the documentary about uh, these young women wanting to be mermaids. Well, do they want to be mermaids or do they want to be fucking whales? Are, are they chewing the rudders off of yachts in Gibraltar? Uh, uh, like, my God, you, you think a fucking mermaid uh, would, would have enough fucking self-respect and self-discipline to be vaguely shaped like a mermaid and but they all seem to be shaped like tuna fish and, and then uh, I, I mean I just watched the I just, just watched the trailer because uh, I didn't want to you know spend an hour looking at pictures of these fat uh, young women trying to be mermaids uh, and then but, but even in the little you know the little three-minute trailer, you see a couple of the old retired mermaids. You know, the women, the mermaids my age, back when a, uh, when a mermaid, uh, you know, when the tail wasn't the best-looking part of the mermaid, and they all seem to still look like fucking mermaids. You know, and I'm thinking, I'm looking at these uh, you know, retired mermaids and thinking, all right, would I rather have sex 
with a with a 63 year old mermaid with a 21 BMI or a 21 year old mermaid with a 63 BMI and it was no fucking contest and uh, so anyway uh, when I finished this article uh, from this uh, from this young hottie who probably does have a BMI of 22 and I and I my comment was something like uh, coming from a 63 year old man who has not had sex in five years but used to have a lot of it uh, when I was a young man there are two more reasons you left out of your list but if I mention them here the comments section from your female readers would make the incel columns you talk about sound like a regular love fest so I will hit the edit button and of course the two reasons being that that all of these damn young uh, these all, all these damn young women you, you, you know good God like a bunch of fucking heifers uh, so telling me that these young men are uh, not just uh, walking around in a constant state of uh, fucking arousal because the because these damn young women are so fucking fat and then, of course, the other reason, you know, closely tied into that is, is the damn porno. Uh, as I was mentioning the, recently, the only place you can find a video of a thin young woman anymore is on YouPorn. If you want to see a damn young woman with a fucking BMI of less than 30, don't go uh, looking for mermaids. So anyway, and then surprisingly, the other uh, story came out from none other than Jessica Wildfire, uh, you know, who's normally a, a Doomer chick writing about uh, Doomer stuff, but even Jessica was, was getting on the, the bandwagon uh, <clears throat> not quite as anti-male as the young woman. I'm not sure how old is Jessica Wildfire anyway. I have no clue how old Jessica is, that numer chick. Uh, so what she was talking about, uh, which might have something to do with uh, the, the other study, she was talking about something that she had just read, some research or survey or whatever, that more than half of men and now this did not seem to limit it to young men. This seemed to be men of any age. According to what she was reading, that more than half of men are scared to ask women out because they're afraid the women will think they are creeps. That's what how Jessica was... Uh, was summarizing men are afraid to ask women out because they're afraid the women will think they are creeps. Now, I'm a little unclear. I'm letting a damn wasp out the window. Uh, so, I think that was Jessica kind of paraphrasing the research. I'm not sure that was one of the choices why men don't ask women out. What it was, was that I think that Jessica was interpreting as because they're afraid the women will think they're creeps. Is It was that they're afraid of being rejected. It's fear of rejection. Uh, and so she, you know, kind of jumped the shark. Uh, I don't know whether she was being tongue-in-cheek or not. 
that fear of rejection, she added the layer, they're afraid they're gonna be rejected because the women think they're creeps. And so uh, I, I was going along with her interpretation of it, so my comment to Jessica, which she did not respond to, is I said, well, Jessica, uh, according to my research uh, over the last 63 years, as far as I can tell, uh, the, the vast majority, about 80% of women I know that are in relationships with men are in relationships with creeps. And uh, the ones who are looking for men tend to be attracted to creeps so what is the message here uh, the message here is that nice guys finish last I mean you know look at the women like they'd be throwing themselves at goddamn Donald Trump for instance uh, so I'm not at all sure uh, I, I think it's the I think a hell of a lot of men are are afraid to ask women out because they're afraid they're going to be rejected because they're not creeps, judging by the number of fucking creeps and assholes. Uh, I, I see all these clueless women uh, spending their lives with, throwing their fucking lives down the toilet, hanging around these fucking creepy assholes. Uh... As I told you, you know, I, and I added that uh, the majority of men I know that are not in relationships uh, with women uh, are not creeps. They're not creeps, and you act like that there's no such thing as creepy women. Well, uh, that's a whole nother rant that, that, that men are are cornering the market on creeps. Uh, so I admit I have uh, I have always uh, been uh, very uh, shy about asking women out. Uh, it's I mean going is this my whole life uh that, you know, after you ask a, a few women out, and they, especially is when you, uh, whatever happened to that uh, term, make a pass, you know, especially when you lower your standards, and you're, 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 you know, you're, you're lowering the bar uh, because there's nothing else. Uh, and you ask some woman out and, and you're lowering your standards and she uh, rejects you. That's, uh, that has happened to me uh, <laughs> uh, more, more than once. Uh, my general reason for being nervous about asking women out. My fear of rejection has always been, but especially since going down the doomosphere, is uh, that the woman won't necessarily think I'm a creep so much as that she will have no fucking clue uh, what, what I'm about. No fucking clue. She will, uh, she will have no clue uh, what my worldview is about. She will not get my jokes. That's for sure as shit. She won't understand my sense of humor. Uh, she will have, uh, she will have no fucking clue, uh, why 
I left a, you know, a six-figure job, a beautiful home in uh, South Austin, Texas, uh, money, friends, uh, so I can end up, uh, you know, living basically in a converted tool shed behind a little shack on the side of the road and for half the year and then go, uh, you know, driving around randomly with my thumb up my ass uh, for the other six months a year. She would uh, have just, just, and, and this, of course, is 99% of women. Uh, <laughs> even the women uh, that, that I have no interest, of course, there, you know, there is this problem that I have no interest in, uh, in asking out uh, the, the vast majority of women but the fear of rejection of 99% women uh, of the women on the planet is because they have no fucking clue uh, what I'm doing with my life and I have to admit I don't blame them for uh, jumping to this conclusion when they when they look at my resume and uh, <laughs> they a little bit mystified. So this is why I will continue to be spending every Saturday night this summer uh, with my thumb up my ass on my computer while my tiny houses are full of uh, you know, attractive single women or little young lovers or various pair bondings. Oh boy. Anywho, it is a gorgeous Sunday evening and I have a dead uh, factory farmed pig in the truck with me and I have got to throw one of my fellow earthlings on the barbecue. I'm hoping the, uh, the aroma of the smoke from my grilling fellow earthling will attract some, uh, carnivorous doomer chick to come check out what's on the grill anyway get out there and enjoy your lonely life of being rejected and not having sex and all the rest of it. Well, you still can. Bye, guys.